Our question asks us, what equation describes the growth pattern of this sequence of blocks? So we want to figure out, if I know that x is equal to 10, how many blocks am I going to have? So let's just look at this pattern here. So our first term in our sequence, or our first object, or our first pattern of blocks right here, we just have one block right there. So let me write the term right up here. So I have the term. Not term, and then I'll have the number of blocks. Number of blocks. Number of blocks. So in our first term, we had one block. And then our second term, I'll just write this down just so we have it. What happened here? So it looks just like our first term, but we added a column here of four blocks. So it's like one plus four right there. So we're going to have five blocks right there. We added 4 to it. Then in our third term, what happened? What happened in our third term? Well, it just looks just like the second term, but we added another column of four blocks here. right? We added this column right there, if you imagine they're being added to the left-hand side of the pattern. So we added four more blocks. We have nine blocks now. We have nine blocks. So it looks like each time we're adding four blocks. And on this fourth term, same thing. It, the third term is just this right here. This right here is what the third term looked like. And then we added another column of four blocks right here. So we added four more. So we're going to have 13 blocks. So our fourth term is 13. So let's see if we can come up with a formula, either looking at the, the graphics or maybe looking at the numbers themselves. So one way to think about it. So we start off with, so when x is equal to 1, let's say that x is equal to the term, we add just this 1 there. Then when x is equal to 2, we added one column of 4. So this is when x is equal to 2. We have one column of 4. Then when x is equal to 3, we have two columns of 4 right there. And you could even say when x is equal to 1, you had zero columns, right? We had no nothing, no extra this columns of 4 blocks. We didn't have any. And then when x is equal to 4, we had three columns. We had three columns there when x is equal to 4. So what's a pattern here? Or how can we express the number of blocks we're going to have given the term that we have? Well, it looks like we're always going to have one box. So let me write it this way. If I write the number of blocks, let me write it this way. Number, number of, the block, of blocks, it looks like we're always going to have one. right? We have this one right here. That one right there, that one right there, that one right there. It looks like we always have 1 plus a certain number of columns of 4. But how many columns do we have? When x is equal to 1, we have no columns of 4 blocks. When x is equal to 2, we have 1 column. When x is equal to 3, we have 2 columns. So when x is equal to anything, it looks like we have 1 less number of columns. So it's going to be x, it's going to be x minus 1, right? When x is 2, x minus 1 is 1. When x is 3, x minus 1. So this right here is x minus 1. x is 2, this is x minus 1. This is x minus 1. This is x minus 1. And x minus 1 will tell us the number of columns we have. right? Here we have 1, 2, 3 columns. Here we have 1, 2 columns. Here we only have 1 column. Here we have 0 columns. So it even works for the first term. And in every one of these columns, so this right here, x minus 1 is the number of the number of columns. And then in each column, we have four blocks. So it's the number of columns times times 4. right? For each of these columns, we have one column. We have 1, 2, 3, 4 blocks. So this is the equation that describes the growth pattern. So let me write this. Let me simplify this a little bit. If I were to multiply 4 times x minus 1, I get the number of blocks being equal to 1 plus 4 times x, I have to distribute it. 4 times x is 4x. And then 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. So that's equal to the number of blocks. The number of blocks. And then we could simplify this. We have a 1 and we have a minus 4, or I guess we were subtracting 4 from it. So this is going to be equal to. 4x minus 3 is the number of blocks given our x terms. So if, we, if we're on term 50, it's going to be 
4 times 50, which is 200, minus 3, which is 197 blocks. Now another way you could have done it is you could have just said, look, every time we're adding 4, this is a linear relationship. And you could essentially find the, the, the slope of the line that connects this, but assume that our line is only defined on integers. And that might be a little bit more complicated, but the way that you think about it is, the way that you think about it is, every one, every time we added a block, we added, or every time we added a term, we added four blocks. So we could write it this way. We could write change. So this triangle right here means change. Delta means change in blocks. Change in blocks. Change in blocks divided by divided by change in x. Now you might recognize this. This is slope. So and if you don't worry, you know, if you don't if slope is a completely foreign concept to you, you could just do it the way we did the first part of this video. And that's a completely legitimate way and hopefully it'll make some connections between what slope is. So what is the change in blocks for a change in x? So when we went from x going from 1 to 2, so our change in x here would be 2 minus 1. We increased by 1. What was our change in blocks? It would be at 4 or 5 minus 1. It's 5 minus 1. And what is this equal to? This is equal to 4 over 1, which is equal to 4. Let me scroll over a little bit. So our change in blocks for our change in x is 4, or our slope is equal to 4. So if you want to do this kind of the setting up a line, the equation of a line way, you would say that our equation, if, if well, let me write it, number of blocks, number of blocks are going to be equal to 4 times our four times the the term that we're dealing with the you know the the term in our pattern plus some constant this right here is the equation of a line if it's completely foreign to you just do it the way we did it earlier in the video and so how do we solve for this constant well we use one of our terms here we know that when we had one in our first term we only had one block so let's put that here so in our first term so when on our first term, we're going to have that b right there, we only had one block. So we have 1 is equal to 4 plus b. If you subtract 4 from both sides of this equation, so you subtract 4 from both sides, what do you get? On the left-hand side, 1 minus 4 is negative 3. And that's equal to, these 4's cancel out. And that's equal to b. So another way to get the equation of line, we've just solved that b is equal to negative 3. We said, how much do the blocks, the number of blocks change for a certain change in x? I should say change in the number of blocks for a change in x. We saw it's always 4. 4 per change in x. When x changes by 1, we change by 4. That gave us our slope. And then to solve for, if you viewed this as a line, although this is only defined on integers, uh, non, I guess, positive integers, in this situation, you could view this as the y-intercept. To solve for this constant, we just use one of our terms. You could have used any of them. We used 1 and 1. You could have used 3 and 9. You could have used anything. We solved b is equal to negative 3. And so if you put b back here, you get 4x minus 3, which is what we got earlier in the video right there. Hopefully you found that fun.